with the real number system. We're taking notes on this, quite honestly, because your future self won't remember it. We are always taking notes for your future self so that you have a resource to go back and look to. The real number system is not something you're going to be expected to know. It's something that will be referenced occasionally, and it's good for you to just have this information in a place where you can go find it. We're going to start at the center. This isn't exactly like a Venn diagram like you started off with because they're not joining circles. The inside here is inside of the, all the other sets, as we saw yesterday when we used the, uh, the physical model. These are nicknamed the counting numbers, but the smallest set is actually called the natural numbers. I think of them with the nickname I first heard of counting numbers, because like little kids, they start with the number one. I will try to go at a pace where it's easy to keep up with my notes, but I also know it's hard to take notes and listen at the same time. Let's put some examples of what this is in here. The smallest number in the natural numbers is one, two, three, four, and it goes on and on and on. But the smallest number in this set is one. If you're in an awkward place to take notes from where you are, please feel free to turn your desk, turn your chair, all of it if you need to. Does anybody remember what our second set was called? Almost. Whole numbers. Whole numbers is our next biggest set, and it is just barely bigger than the natural numbers. It is defined as the natural numbers and zero. So the smallest number in this set is zero one, two, et cetera, et cetera. I'm using a highlighter for my colors, so I'm gonna highlight that a little bit. Now we come to the set that I was just given the name for. I want you at this point to picture a number line. The natural numbers includes everything bigger than one. The whole numbers includes all of those same numbers plus zero. Integers now includes the opposites. And the definition of this is whole numbers and their opposites. And the only number in this set that doesn't have an opposite is zero. Zero is like the center point that they go off from. I'm going to draw a quick coordinate plane here. All of these numbers are on number lines, they're on our coordinate plane. What's in the very center of a coordinate plane? Origin. It's called the origin point and its, its coordinates are zero comma zero. Everything else on here goes up or down based on their relationship to zero and those are the opposites. So I'm just going to highlight, oops, I almost used the same color. Let's change out. For integers, we're going to include the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 
and 0. And we're going to include numbers like negative 72. It's the opposite of positive 72. We're going to include 0, negative 4, 127, We're kind of keeping these in the small range of numbers or close to zero, but these numbers go on and on and on, just like number lines show the arrows, they just keep going. Our biggest set of numbers that includes all of those other things are the rational numbers. Oops, off my screen there. Let me zoom out a little bit. And the rational numbers hold all of those earlier number sets that we had. But everything that's in the rational number set can be turned into a fraction or a ratio. So even though we have the number 3, let me use my highlighter. The number 3 is in all of these sets. It is a rational number. It is an integer. It is a whole number. And it is a natural number. Why is the number 3 also a rational number? Because I can make it over 1. Because all whole numbers are over an invisible one, they are also a rational number. Who's ever heard a phrase of three to one? I have three cups of sugar to one cup of juice. That would be very, very sweet lemonade or something, wouldn't it? <laughs> That's a bad example. Rational numbers also include negatives. Could be negative decimals. Anything that could be turned into a ratio so picture those fractions. Square roots also fit in here. But square roots can also fit in the natural numbers. I know little kids aren't counting 1, 2, 3, 4, square root of 25. But what is the square root of 25? Five. It's 5. So it also does fit in there. Oops, I wrote the square root of 5, and I meant 25. Oops, bad notes. Okay, on the other side, who remembers what was in my other box that was completely separate in a different shape completely? Yeah, irrational numbers. Now trust me, there are really stupid, dorky math jokes about the word irrational because it means something different when you're talking about people. An irrational person is somebody who doesn't make sense. Really all irrational means in math is that it can't be turned into a ratio. So it's going to be things like pi. It's going to be things like the square root of 2. It's going to be decimals. But cannot be turned into a fraction because they have a repeating pattern that goes on and on and on and on and on. So let's think about numbers that might fit somewhere in here. Anybody want to come up with a number and we'll see where it fits? Yes. Roman numbers? Roman numbers? 
the letter E on a calculator is like a sum symbol. It, does, it usually means sum or you're entering into formulas. Wait, what is um, Roman numbers? They're just a different way of writing R numbers. Say that again. I'm actually just thinking like, let's use the number 13. How many of you are 13 years old? Okay, that was something that some groups found in common, was their age. Not everyone, because some of us just had a birthday. Where would the number 13 fit here? It's a natural number. It is a natural number. If, if the kids are keeping counting, or if you look at a number line, starting at one, you would get to 13, wouldn't you? That means it's a natural number and a whole number and and how is 13 rational? It would be 13 over 1. What's another number that you know? Square root of 10. Square root of 10. Where would the square root of 10 fit in this? Rational. Irrational. Why? It would be a really long decimal. The square roots are really, as we talked about er earlier, the opposites of um, exponents, right? So I'm going to pull this off real quick. If I did 1 squared, I get 1. 2 squared, I get 4. Oops, sorry. 3 squared, great question, 9, 4 squared, 16, 5 squared equals 25, and I could keep going, right? 6 squared is 36, right? That means that the square root of 1 is 1, the square root of 4 is 2, the square root of 9 is 3, So the example of the square root of 10 fits in between here. The square root of 10 exists. It is a real number. But it's not something that has two numbers multiplied that are the same number that gets us a square. It does not have a perfect opposite. And so it doesn't fit into what we call our square roots. It exists but it's somewhere above three and below four and is a crazy decimal, which is what makes it irrational. So the question was, where do exponents go in this? I just had some exponents up there. Let's pick one. Should we do three squared three to, to the second power? What is three squared equal? Nine. 3 squared equals 9. 9 is a natural number, so it fits here. It also fits here. It also fits here. It also fits here. Say that again. What example did you want? Uh, I was just saying 3 cubed. 3 cubed? It is. So 3 cubed, oops, and I still put squared because I've been writing it, is 3 times 3 times 3. What's the first 3 times 3? 9 This is another reason you don't have your notebooks yet. There's things I want us to glue in the front, and one of them is a list of all the squares and all the cubes. So you don't have to calculate them every time. Um, so yes, where would 3 cubed go then? Where does 27 fit? Yeah, don't you wish this natural numbers box was bigger now? Yeah. Let's squeeze it in. 3 to the third power. Can 3 to the third power or 27 be written as a ratio? 
as 27 over 1. Can we throw some division problems in here? Fractions are division. Let's try 12 divided by 6. I put it there because I'm writing it as a ratio, but could it go anywhere else? Where else could it go? It can go down. Yeah, and I'm going to do this in a color-coded way because I'm running out of room in my little tiny space. But it is also a natural number and a whole number and an integer. Is it starting to make more sense now than it did yesterday? Are we ready to try to go back to our Desmos and see if our card sort is right now that we have notes to reference? Let's try that. Okay, I'm gonna stop the recording.